Hello, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Leslie King, and thank you for having me. I love Ephesians 6.10, I mean 6.12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. I was raised in a very dysfunctional home. My mother was a workaholic. My father was an alcoholic. Molested at the age of eight by an older male relative who was in his late 20s, his early 30s. Having been told if I ever say anything, my father would kill me, would kill my mother, I'm sorry. Being raised in poverty, all these feelings, emotions, resentments, and strongest of all, hatred. Why me, God? Unknowingly, this, this would be the start of a living hell for me. At the age of 15, I started running away from home. One day a man told me I was beautiful and he loved me. He wined and dined me, bought me beautiful clothing. He took me around his friends and to different bars. He told me that he loved me and that no one would ever hurt me again. Little did I know, he was running game. Everything that he told me and everything that he bought me and everything that he did for me came with a price, servitude. For over 20 years of my life, I was sold to the highest bidder, having to do drugs in order to deal with Johns, to forget, just to numb myself from all the pains of my past, just feeling like I did not exist but the, no one knew. I did not choose this way of life. I had dreams and goals, but they were stolen from me as a child. I was forced into this life. I was forced into this life. Then it became all I knew. July 4th, I tried to co commit suicide. As I, felt my sight, as I felt myself dying, I screamed to the top of my lungs, if there's a God in heaven, if you real, help me, man. Just help me. I felt something so warm and inviting, and I knew it was over. I was going to be okay. Then the fight was on. I reunited with my family after years of separation. I found a job in home health care, which I really wasn't qualified for due to my criminal background record. My clients were both very spiritual, which was a plus for me. I was asked to work at the Grand Rapids Police Department, which me <laughs> at the Grand Rapids Police Department. I worked with a group called SWAP, which stands for Social Work and Police Partnership. I worked with the Grand Rapids Police going out helping women just like me, going in and out of jails, going on the streets, doing outreach, and what made it a plus for me, because I was just like them. I was able to reach them. I stood on the same corner with many of those women, the same women I did drugs with. Many of us had the same pimps, so it was easy for us to relate. Then I want to do something else, because after I talk with them, where was I going to put them? Where were we going to go? There was no place for them to go. Then I was like, I need to do something else. So then I said, I want to be a social worker. So I went down to the college, and they told me I couldn't be a social worker due to my past. That's when I said, no, 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 no. Nobody's ever gonna put me in a box again. I've completed one degree. I'm completing my second degree to become a social worker. Right there in this picture, you see me, my oldest son, and two of my grandchildren. I founded Sacred Beginnings Women's Transitional Program, a nonprofit organization in 2005, to meet the needs of those who were and still are being sexually exploited. 
Sacred Beginnings was the first peer-minted program in Michigan. As you can see, you have to make it to a certain level to join one of our outreach teams. Here you see one of our outreach team members. We're praying for a, women, for a woman here on South Division because not only in the homes is it, is it, a, is it a, a safe haven, but also we have blessed bags, if you can see it that close. And those blessed bags are filled with Bibles, personal needs. We even put perishable items in there for the women, water, um, just anything the women might need while they're out there. Because one thing we don't do is we don't condemn them. You're not going to hell, all fire and brimstone. We let them know that no matter what, God still loves you. And when it's time and you sick and tired, call my phone, I'm on my way. And if you don't, and they'll call me, even if they don't want to do anything but hear my voice, and I'm right there. And many of them will call me in the middle of the night, Leslie, I just need to know that you still love me. And yes, I do. Or Leslie, come get me, and I'm on my way. Sacred Beginnings is the only adult, personalized, recovery-oriented, long-term safe haven here in Michigan. It is a two-year program. It's not a shelter. I have to tell a lot of people that. It is not a shelter. It's not you stay here for 30 to 60 days until we find you a place to go. You come here, we have volunteers. We just got a licensed practitioner. We have an MSW. I work at Pine Rest, so I get a lot of free services for my girls. Um, and you have a lot of things you must do there. You have curfew, we do drug drops. You know, it's an order that you have to follow in order to be there. And if you don't follow that structure, then I guess you don't want to be there. So, make sure I don't cut this bad boy off. Through God's grace and mercy, Today I am a daughter, a sister, a mother, a grandmother, a student, the founder of an outstanding ministry. So when I look back and say, why me God? I know the answer. Why not me? Thank you all and be blessed.